Welcome to the Amesbury Chamber of Commerce's Behind the Brick Wall program. I'm Phil DiCollegero, Executive Director of the Amesbury Chamber of Commerce, and we're excited to have you join us today as we joined Janet Faulkner of Faulkner Commercial Group, as well as Mountaintop Landscaping for an adventure as we go look behind the brick wall of some of Amesbury's local businesses. Janet, pretty exciting. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, this is gonna be a great series and it's really nice that we're gonna be able to uh, focus uh, some attention on some of these great hardworking entrepreneurs and these local businesses. It's cool that we've been able to team up with Amesbury Community Television to go and again explore these yes. businesses because a lot of people don't realize what's happening behind some, again, behind these brick walls, right. some of these right. neat shops in our downtown um, right. and our makers. So I'm psyched where you're taking us today. So today we're going to go to Ovidia and we're going to meet with Antoinette. We're going to learn a little bit about how she got started and a little bit about what products she sells and about what her plans are for the future. So I'm really excited. Great chocolate. I love and the coffee. And maybe pick up some chocolate while we're there. Maybe. Maybe. And bring maybe it back. Maybe some taste testing. Okay. <laughs> That's With that being said, let's go check it out. Great. Antoinette, thanks for having us in to show you your beautiful shop and to tell us a little bit about your business. Um, we're here at 36 Main Street Rear for, uh, for our viewers. And tell us a little bit about how long you've been here. And I'm going to just ask you some questions about your business and things we're interested in knowing. OK. So Ovidia was established actually in 2004 by the original owner, Barbara Vogel. Um, she worked out of her home kitchen for some time and then um, grew out of that and worked in a licensed kitchen in Newburyport. She um, then chose to come over to Amesbury um, as it was, she thought, an up-and-coming city and wanted to be part of that and wanted her business to grow here. Um, she came over here and opened the doors in 2007, um, early February, right mm -hmm. before Valentine's Day, which we all know is a busy, huge busy. chocolate yeah. holiday. Um, and so um, I joined the team in 2011 um, as a barista. Um, I actually have no culinary background, um, but Barbara saw something in me that even I didn't know was there. Um, within a matter of weeks, um, she asked me if I would like to learn the art of chocolatiering, and that's how that started. Wow, that's that's great. And the so this location has changed, has expanded. So tell us a little bit about that. Right. So the the, the space that we're in, people often ask um, why we're not on Main Street um, because we'd be perfect on Main Street. Yeah. Barbara chose this location on purpose to make Ovidia a destination. Um, and it has worked. We are definitely a destination. Um, we have a lot of regular customers, um, but there are also people that will Google chocolate shops and find us and, and find come. You online. Um, Great. So yeah, so I took over in 2016 and shortly after that we decided we were gonna take down a wall and expand our cafe, um, which we have done and um, has allowed, you know, before COVID, people to come and sit down and enjoy a cup of coffee and have a chat and just, you know, meet with someone and yeah, just have Great. quiet time. Great. So can you tell us a little bit about what you have here and um, what, what you offer? I know you have some fantastic chocolates um, and also specialty coffees. And right. that was your background as yes. a barista. Yes. So tell us a little bit about what your most popular um, items are or what your favorite things are to make. Yeah, so I would have to say my favorite thing to make is probably the truffles. Um, we hand paint um, the shells and that is kind of a zen place for me. Um, it seems monotonous, I'm sure, to some people, but it just puts me in a place of just calm. Um, and we hand paint thousands of truffles for holidays. Wow. Um, and I love the truffles. I love the whole um, aspect of it from start to finish. From hand painting those shells, we make our own ganache fillings, um, and then you're backing a truffle, and then, you, you know, then you're topping it. And each truffle has its own um, signature topping so nothing is ever the same and once it has that it's consistent throughout it never changes so wow, that's yeah. great how many different varieties of truffles do you make we have quite a few we rotate through them constantly um, since we do small batch um, and our case only allows for so many right. to fit in there um, but we probably have about 36 that we kind of rotate all the time um, you know and seasonal flavors you know at Christmas it's gingerbread and eggnog and 
um, you know, peppermint, whereas for Valentine's Day, we just did a strawberry basil and a passion fruit caramel. Ooh, nice. So yeah, so definitely some different flavors that we can pull out during special special seasons. Great. Yeah. And tell us about the coffee. I see see people mm -hmm. walking around with, with mm -hmm. your Ovidia coffee cups yeah. all the time. Tell us yes. about that. So Ovidia is also an espresso bar. So um, we make all, you know, espresso based drinks, lattes, cappuccinos. Um, but we also have like our, one of our signature drinks is a mocha vidia, which is half coffee, half hot chocolate. Um, the hot chocolate recipe happens to be Barbara's grandmother, Ovidia. Wow. Um, her hot chocolate recipe. I didn't know that. So, yes. So that is where the name Ovidia came from. It is actually Barbara's grandmother's name. Oh, that's great. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's a nice touch mm. to know. Now, how many seats do you have in here? Do you, and, and what are your hours? So we are open um, Monday through Friday from 7 to 5 and Saturday from 8 to 5. We are closed on Sundays. Um, and then the seating we have um, typically um, would be about 18 to 20. Um, and then right now we're not allowing seating just to, you know, just with COVID and right. everything, just to protect everybody. That was another question I was going to ask. How has COVID affected your business? Um, well, I have to say, they're those loyal customers, right? And coffee is an addiction. So, um, you know, we have those people that have come in. We were lucky enough to remain open um, through the entire thing, which I think actually was a lot easier. Um, we just adapted. We shortened our hours. Um, I became the barista full time um, and just kind of worked our way. Um, it is really about adapting and overcoming the, the situation. I also am, my personality is a um, fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl. So um, I'm used, I can do that. I don't mind switching gears really quickly. Um, and chocolate also, it requires you to be patient. So it takes time to set up. So you've got to be working on something else while you're waiting for that. So right. you've got to be able so to switch gears. Yeah, you've got to be able to switch time. gears all the time. So um, yeah, so I feel like that's already in my bones. That already works. So yeah. And, and tell us a little bit about what your experience was as a barista and the training that you had for that, that that lent, it, lent, lent itself to this? Well, two of my favorite things are coffee and chocolate. So it doesn't um, surprise me that I ended up here. Um, and uh, we do, we are about the details. Um, and I personally want every experience that you have at Ovidia to be an experience. I want you to be thinking about that cup of coffee or that chocolate days later. Um, so I, as far as training, when I got here, I had worked as a barista somewhere else, but um, Barbara was more about um, molding you into what she needed you to be, what she saw the Ovidia mm. version of you to be. Um, and so, you know, you get this kind of intense training. Um, and then um, the chocolatiering was a whole other realm. I mean, that took us probably two or three years before um, I felt, I felt like I was a true chocolatier. Really? Yeah. Great, great. Mm. Uh, and you remember, you're, um, you're very active with the chamber and member yes. of the chamber. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your thoughts on Amesbury and the benefits of the Amesbury Chamber. So um, Barbara was very involved in the chamber um, and did say that one of the things she found very helpful, even early on being here, was the chamber. Um, being involved, knowing what's going on, but also having input into those things. Um, as a creative thinker, you sometimes do think outside the box and um, it allows other avenues for your creativity to come to fruition and not just chocolate and coffee. Um, I also like being involved with the other business owners in town and um, I do think that, I, you know, I am at this point, I am vice chair of the chamber. I've been involved, you know, personally with the chamber on the board um, for two years now. Um, and I actually really look forward to becoming chair um, and kind of setting up some goals and Great. some fun stuff and, you know, seeing where we right. go from there yeah right well you're you're a a huge addition to this to to Amesbury and to the uh, to the the downtown business community and you're and being a destination is is great yeah can people order online and to to ship things do you do that type of thing yes so we actually um, again one of the things to adapt to our current situation was we created an online website so that you can order chocolate and have it shipped. 
Um, we did that in... Um, good to know might be dangerous. Yeah, know. right? <laughs> good to, right. Um, we did that between Easter and Mother's Day. Um, found it extremely well received. Smart, um, yeah. And so we've continued with that. And, um, you know, that's where we're going anyway, I think. Um, and I can ship chocolate, so that's, that's easy. Not so much a latte, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so what do you see coming up in the future? Do you have, what are your plans for the business? I know you have plans to oh. expand your role with the chamber, yeah. which is great. Yeah. Um, ex any, ex um, any plans to expand your business? Well, I mean, there's always that opportunity, right? Um, I, Ovidia is growing um, rapidly. Um, the chocolate side of this is, I mean, I, I'm not even sure that this space will hold us in the next two to three years. Um, but I do like the, the interaction with customers. Yeah. So I personally am not ready to give that, to, to make that switch. Yeah. Um, but I'm open to anything and everything. We, I mean, we're, we just had one of our best Valentine's seasons ever. That's great. Um, and last year we were still, again, doing really well. So again, it's, it's a, I'm very grateful. Um, and I know um, that not everyone is, um, but the, again, a strong foundation for your business plan and being able to adapt, I think, makes a huge difference. So you've found solutions to the to the challenges, and yep. your passion for your right. product and the community shows mm -hmm. in in what you offer. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why you've done such an amazing job. Thank you. So thank you. We're, we're very happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. So that was pretty cool. That was really cool. Antoinette has such a great story and her, her process and her products are just amazing. So I, I really hope that, um, that everybody that hears this gets to pop in and grab, what was it that we saw? The frozen, uh, um, hot, frozen hot chocolate frozen hot that chocolate. looked amazing. And, uh, and all the little handmade truffles and the chocolates. So I, I, uh, I, I grabbed a bunch to, uh, to take home. Good. What always kills me about that place is just the story. Like, I love the products, but yeah. I love Antoinette's story about how she started as a barista and is now this, this professional chocolatier who's built this really cool business in downtown Amesbury. Yeah, and it's such a quaint little place, and honestly, I didn't even know that she had expanded and that she had seating and that it's such a great late night place to, to pop into as well. I love it. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to go grab a coffee right now. She's, she's got such a passion for what she does, which I think is something that we're going to see as a theme when, as we talk to all these business owners. So, um, And you've been very chatty, my understanding I'm is, right? a little chatty. So where, I mean, who else have you been chatting with? What's next? So we, the, the next business is going to be to meet uh, Aaron Cunningham over at RMA Craft Beer and Wine. So we're going to hop right across the street. And, uh, and see what he's got over there and, and talk to him. And he's a new business owner. He's he just opened. He's a new opened. business, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Wait, me too. Take Let's us go. over. So we may have to pick up some samples over there too. I like that idea. Okay. Let's go. Great. Aaron, you had mentioned that you have a connection to Amesbury that prompted you to want to have a business here. So tell us about that. I do too many years ago, um, to count at this point now, the school, the Sparhawk School that's down on Elm Street was the home that my family and I actually lived in. So when I came back to this community looking at this particular location, um, it really did feel like coming home a little bit. Great, great. So you, so you have a, a lot of, you have a following here. I do have a following great. here. So tell me a little bit about who your customer is and maybe what your favorite products are that you have. So the favorite product question um, comes up a lot and with 1,500 unique items in the store, picking a favorite is not something um, that's easily done. I, I think for, as far as our customers are concerned, it, it's, it, it's wide ranging. There is not a set demographic. It's not you know male, female, young, old. Um, it, it's a variety of different people because with that many SKUs in here, you have a, you have a lot of options um, for people regardless of what your taste is. And I think the, the uniqueness of our store is the ability to buy everything by the single and do a That's mix and match. Great. It allows us to customize the product offering for that individual person, for that individual sale, whether you're celebrating something, eating something, um, or just looking for your everyday beverage. 
Which brings up something that I saw out front. You have a sign that talks about pairings. Tell us a little bit about the pairings that you do. Yeah, so I think a lot of people are familiar that, you know, you kind of pair wines um, yes. very traditionally with meals and chocolates and foods and desserts. Um, with, the, with the amount of the quality and the amount of craft products that are available today on the beer and cider side, um, you can pair anything today. And I think that's where myself and, and you know, the rest of the staff, Dan and Brent and Amanda, are really good at saying, okay, again, what are you celebrating today? What are you looking to eat with that? And finding, again, that exact mix of uh, product, whether it's a combination of wine and beer, or ciders and beer, or even some of the mead products we have, uh, to pair that up with whatever you're celebrating, whether it be food or, or um, you know, uh, some sort of um, um, celebration. Great, that's really interesting. The, I noticed too that, tell me a little bit about how you have, you have all yeah. these different sections. So, so how might I find something right. if I were looking for something specific? Well, again, our most valuable resource in the store is our employees. So the first thing to do if you're unsure, stop by the front desk and we will absolutely take care of you. But in general, the store is organized again regionally. So we have our East Coast offerings and primarily our Massachusetts and New England up front. You work your way back to the middle of the country and the West Coast, all the way to our pretty robust international um, selection. It's not done by style. A lot of people come in here and say, I want a really great porter, or I want a really great New England IPA. Well, those are sprinkled throughout the store. So again, I think the, you know, one of the great things that we do is whether you're in here to buy a single can or a mixed four pack or a whole case of something, um, just jump up to the desk, ask us what you're, you know, if you can get a little help and what you're looking for, and we will certainly um, put something together for you. And one thing I've learned is that you have a, you have a wide, you have a, a great knowledge of all the different products. And that, I think, sets you apart from a lot of places right. where people can go and buy beer and wine. And I think, uh, I think that's a, a good point, yes. Is, and I absolutely turn credit to, to the other folks in the store. They definitely have a, a wider palate range and understanding of all the, all the beers. I'm still, still learning as the new store owner in that. Um, but that's, you know, our customers have, have uh, you know, a different variety of needs. So having that knowledge to be able to talk about, I've tried this, I know what it's like, is really kind of crucial. And then when you're putting together, again, that kind of thing to be able to mix and match and try and experience new things, right. that's crucial well, the knowledge. the fact that you can buy one of these and one of these and right. one of these is a, is a great right. plus. And, so. and here's the best part. You don't need to know what we need to know. We just need to know what you like, right? right? Tell, if you, you can come in here and say, I don't drink beer at all, but I want to try something. Right. Tell us what you do like to drink. Tell us what you're going to be eating. Yeah. And we will find something in this store that works for you. Right. Um, and you should never, some people come in and say, I don't really know what I'm talking about. And they feel a little uncomfortable. Everybody is welcome. Please don't feel uncomfortable because that's our job is to help you p find something in a store that you can take home and enjoy yourself or with friends and family. Well, Aaron, I know you specialize here in beer and wine, but I see all sorts of other goodies that you offer. Tell us what you've got here. So, Janet, although this section is a little smaller uh, in product offerings than what we have in the rest of the store, uh, what's really interesting is, you know, chocolates and sweets pair with wines really well. Um, what a lot of people don't know is they pair great with beers as well. Uh, so what we've tried to do here is we've tried to feature uh, some unique chocolate offerings. Um, as well as the very popular Coastal Maine popcorn from Portland, Maine. Um, what some people might know is that Coastal Maine popcorn sells more popcorn to Massachusetts residents than Maine residents. That's really and it has proven ever popular. And then I think it's always important when you're here shopping to visit us at any time of the year, but most importantly in the fall, um, there's a farm up in Vermont uh, called Ridlon Farms, and it's a family-owned farm that um, we get there, uh, get our maple syrup from. Uh, and this is also proven to be a very popular product uh, with our customers today, which you wouldn't necessarily think of beer and wine drinkers. Well, Aaron, this looks like a really interesting corner. Tell me about some of these selections. So, Janet, we're standing in what we like to call the wine and cider corner. So behind you over here uh, is our, our fantastic selection of ciders, which is something that's become extremely popular. And then over here in this corner, we have our our red wines and our white wines, um, but you'll also notice here in the display and in the corner shelf, 
we sell quite a bit of canned wine. It's become very popular uh, nowadays. Most 12 ounce cans are the equivalent of a half a bottle of wine, so it's something where you don't need to open a whole bottle. Um, and this section continues to grow and expand. Um, the popularity is growing, and people have been very uh, positive about the selection and the options that we have. What a great idea. So Janet, this is one of my favorite sections in the whole store. Uh, so every week we try to bring in something new and unique and different to the store and we wanted to have prominent placement right when you come in to visit our new arrival section. So you'll find things that either we haven't carried in a really long time or something that's really unique and new um, coming out into the industry today. And I will say we've visited a couple of sections today. The one section we didn't get a chance to visit but I'd like to talk about now is we also carry meads, which not everybody does. We have a really nice mead section, so I encourage people when they come in, after you visit the new arrivals and wander through our store to choose your, your beer, um, stop by and check out some of the really great meads we have too. You won't find them on the new arrival shelf, but we definitely have them in the store. I think the most exciting thing that we have coming up is that we are working on way, uh, a way to bring back tastings. And there's two types of tastings that we hope to offer in the store. One will be where your favorite breweries come and tell you about their brands um, and you have somebody from the brewery that, that takes you through a tasting. And then what we also hope to offer um, is tastings just in-house that we do ourselves. And um, Dan Morrison, who's our store manager, um, has a tremendous knowledge on beers and is fantastic at taking people through wine and beer tastings. And on Wednesdays when we're doing them, you'll find um, me moving behind the counter so Brent, um, our other employee, can take you back there and walk you through some of the great selections on the new arrival shelf great. or from anywhere in the store. So I, I look forward to uh, the opportunity of getting those up and running and I really hope to see everybody here. So I know you've been a member of the Amesbury Chamber, so tell us about that. How's that been working out for you and how can the Chamber help you? So, uh, you know, I knew early on, I was, I, I spoke with Phil, I think, before I even purchased the store. Um, so working with Phil and working with the Chamber was something that I knew um, I would need to do because I, I yeah. came to this store because it's a historic Massachusetts Main Street community right down to the brick sidewalks. And being a part of that community, I think, is being a part of the Chamber. You know, I came here to be business partners and retail partners with all of the other me chamber members up and down Main Street. And I think uh, the opportunity to engage right away has been kind of right. invaluable to our business. The chamber did a great job at helping us communicate our coveted annual advent box, um, which this year we sold out of. Um, wow, and great. hopefully next year. We'll, uh, we'll be able to do the same thing. So I think that partnership with the Chamber has, uh, has been absolutely critical to Excellent. the growth we've had so far. Terrific. Well, we wish you the best of success and we're thrilled that you're here. So Thank thanks for giving us the opportunity to check out the store. Thank you very much, Janet. Sure. Wow, that was a neat visit with Aaron. It was, it was. He's got a great story and he's got a great passion for, for all of his products and such a, he's got such a wide range of products and great product knowledge. So that was very interesting. And it's, you know, noticing that there are no samples here, but I've heard that, you know, maybe down the road he'll be able to do down some sampling. Down the road, some tastings possibly, that would be great. It would be cool. I mean, he's nearly, I, I like the passion that he brings. So here's a new, a new guy to our main street who's down in, you know, right downtown Amesbury, who's brought a boatload of passion, not just for his business, but he wants to give back to the community. And that's a theme that I feel like when I speak with a business owner in town, that's right. over and over again what they say. They just, they care about the city. And they're all very positive about the Amesbury Chamber and the benefits of that membership. And actually, they've um, also spoken well about you. And, and, they better. Uh, no. <laughs> and, and, and how you've um, helped and, and how you've helped promote them. So. It's a good thanks team. For, thanks for, uh, for allowing me to be part of this. I'm, I'm looking forward to, the, to meeting more of these business owners. And I'm psyched. That, because your partnership, the partnership with Mountaintop Landscaping and Amesbury Community Television is really what's allowed this program to happen. You're a good sport. I mean, you're going around. I mean, you're getting samples, though, when you're doing it. So <laughs> I'm sure it's a, it's a real chore for you. But it's, it's great that you're doing this and helping profile them because a lot of people in our community are interested about the backstories and don't know. I mean, the things that we've learned from some of these businesses so far that you've gone to visit. The average consumer 
would love to know but doesn't get the right. chance to learn. Right. So hopefully and, this. And a lot of people don't know about all these little businesses in Amesbury. So hopefully we can we can help promote them. You know, I've got a passion for Amesbury. I've been around. My family has um, been coming to Amesbury since oh geez for almost 60 years. So the uh, so I, I just love um, I love all things Amesbury. I'm really excited well, to be a part of this. As typically the starting point for a lot of people looking to you know, enter a space in Amesbury for commercial real estate. I'm glad you've got that attitude. And so I'm, yeah. I'm psyched that you're making Great. this opportunity available. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Great. So join us next time. Janet's going to keep caking us on adventures you know, each will. month. And so I'm looking forward to what we do next month. Great. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, Janet. And thank you to Amesbury Community Television for making this possible.